Is there a Jesse's girl? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. I mean, I write for a point of truth, even the, you know, like a pop song. Is it's got to have some kernel of truth. Hello. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. All right. Cheers. Rick Springfield. Cheers. What? Cheers. What's this drink? This is your rum. Mm hmm It's a spiced pear rum fizz. So you make the rum that's in our cocktail. Yes. It's called Beach Bar Rum. Beach Bar yeah. Rum. In this cocktail. Five acres. It's a pretty nice place. This is new. We're inside really? Rockefeller Center. Rick Springfield, I don't think I have to say this, but musician, actor, writer, author, all those rum things. Maker. Rum maker. How did you get here? I don't know. It's uh, <laughs> It's kind of a hard question when you yeah, think about it. Yeah, it is. It's been an um, interesting journey, yeah. and I, I'm just still traveling along the road. So yeah. I just took some roads that uh, I was always... There's always Choices, forks. Yeah, and I think I took the right forks, hopefully. A couple of times I took the say wrong so, fork. Okay. I would say generally it looks yeah. like you took the right forks. Yeah, I mean, I, I was thinking we were talking about it today. Um, that I came from uh, a little army base in Australia, but, but, but like a little country, is it like a little in farm. In Australia? Yeah. I don't think people, a lot of people know that. No, I know. Well, a couple more of these might have <laughs> been your bloody nom from Australia. <laughs> don't worry about it. Wait a minute. Is that like your real accent? No, my accent, well, that's an Australian accent, but my I accent. I know, but can you still go back to it? Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I, I lived in England when I was a kid, so my actual accent was, it was more kind of a bit clipped, like, like this, more British. But, but I had the Australian thing in it, you know, it was more, I like, had no idea. more like that. I had no idea. Like, I mean, obviously, I'll just, full disclosure, listen to your song on repeat over and over and over again, and I mean Jesse's Girl. Do you love that people know you for Jesse's Girl, or is it annoying? No, no, it's, I, I mean, I'm... I'm very grateful to at least, you know, have a song that uh, has kind of done what that has. But, it, but it's like, I'll have universal. a new album out. I said, yeah. It's universal. I know. You have a new album I out. But I have a new album out, and they'll play me on the interview with Jesse Girl. You know, I'm going, I've got new music. You're like, what uh, I have some new stuff yeah. you could do. Did you think, when you wrote Jesse's Girl, did you think you it was going to be a hit? You can't plan stuff like that. I thought there was better songs on the album. You know, I've, I think I've written better songs since. life like in your young it was awesome. years? It was amazing. I, my favorite, we moved, my dad was in the army, so we moved around every couple of years. But their army bases over there back in the 50s were not like they are here. They were little enclaves out in the bush. I'd wake up at six in the, five o'clock, six in the morning and go and help the milkman. We had a horse and a, and a buggy. And you were helping deliver the milk? Yeah, and I helped deliver Get them. Get out of you know, here! And then... Yeah, it was just an amazing time. Yeah. That's, that's like my golden childhood. Yeah. How does music come into that existence? In well, we Australia? didn't have a TV, um, so we would listen to the radio, or after dinner, we had a player piano, which I have in my house now. Wow. The actual player piano. And my dad was an amazing singer, but he was a career officer in the Army. And we'd you know, sing all these songs, and that was just what we did. That's what we did for entertainment. Yeah. It's very bizarre, really, to think of it. It sounds like something from the 17th century. But it, <laughs> Is it true that you dropped out of high school? I was actually asked to leave high school by the principal. It's a Why? little bit different. Well, because I, uh, my last year at school, I stayed away a total of three months because I discovered the guitar and I didn't want to do anything else. And, and, and you were out just playing? Yeah, I'd stay home and play. I drove my mom insane. She thought I was going to end up a drug addict and on the streets. And... and um, but I w knew what I wanted to do, and I had no more use for school. I hated I hated school. School was like prison to You already at that point wanted to be a musician. Yeah. Yeah, about 13, I decided what I wanted to do. And here comes our new staff surgeon. No. Welcome to General Good Hospital. Steve, nice to see a friendly face when you walk in the door. People who were around in the 80s remember General Hospital, mm -hmm. and they think of you that way, actor first, and then they yeah. discovered your music. But your music came before the acting. Yeah, I just took up acting because I was... You know, it's a way to make money, which is kind of naive because 
all the kids in my acting class for waiting tables to become actors. Please have a sip. <laughs> this is really good. Mm -hmm. This is dangerously good, Rick Springfield. <laughs> I'm driving. <laughs> no, you're not. You have a whole team with you. You're not driving. No. How does General Hospital come about? Do you, you get an audition? You end up on General Hospital? So I went in on it because I didn't have any money. And I read for it, and I didn't think I'd get it because there was yeah. more soapy-looking guys. And you get there. it. And I got it, and it was the first regular money I'd ever seen in my life. It was 500 bucks a week. Ooh. And that was big money. For big me money, man. Yet. And so I said, I'm taking it, because I, cause I had three albums out before, and nothing had happened. And I was said, this is probably nothing's going to happen with this album either, so let me take this. Uh, it ends up being the biggest album, yeah, the biggest selling song. album of your life. Yeah. And, um, With Jesse's girl on it. Yeah, I did. I mean, I just had so many albums that had done nothing, and I thought they were great albums, and so I didn't have a lot of faith in them. Yeah. But I did have faith in something happening eventually. Well, you but, have, so I took the, the took the role. You've written about your depression a lot. Yeah. And I think people appreciate when someone of your stature talks about it out loud. And labels it and says depression. You know? Yeah, yeah. It pull, pulled me down for quite a few years, but I went to therapy, and I still have to deal with it, you know, because of it's, uh, it doesn't go away. Yeah, but it's um, it's part of my drive, also. You know, mm. it's, it's what keeps me pushing, because uh, part of me feels like I'm not enough. You know. Well, I think you're enough for what's what it's worth. <laughs> Thank you. During COVID, yeah. my husband got really sick in the very beginning. Luckily, he's fine. Like, he's not going wait, he's all good. You did the, one of the kindest things that anyone's done for me. You sent this video through your publicist to me of you playing the guitar, playing Jesse's Girl. Hi, Kate, it's Rich Springfield here. Um, I understand you're going through a very tough time, uh, and I wish uh, you and your husband healing and peace. So I thought I would uh, send you healing and love and a song. I want to say it on camera. It it touched us deeply. It was oh. it was so like he was in a not a great headspace at that point. For you to come through and just be like, hey, here's a here's something uplifting for you. It was great. Well, Thank you. The good thing I do is to make people feel better with music. It was an obvious thing to do and the right thing to do. Thank you. So, yeah, uh, but you do that at your shows, right? You, I think you, you seem to be very conscious of the, the impact you're having on people. Mm, yeah. You know they love it. You know, for two hours, I want them to forget all the things that are weighing them down, because that's what I do when I get up on stage. I don't... I don't think of those things. I know. You wrote an autobiography, very open one, mm -hmm. revealing a lot about yourself. Then you write a fiction book mm -hmm. that does like quite well, mm -hmm. and people praise. People praise it. I did a follow-up too. It's actually yes. a very, very strange uh, story, but it's uh, a spiritual story, you know. And, uh, and that's kind of what I am based on: a spiritual searcher. How are you a writer in addition to being? an amazing musician like how is that all in one person oh, i think it's all connected you know i mean writing is writing really um the Songs book is just or words a, a or book's a books. long song that doesn't rhyme <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna write another book yeah i'm writing scripts actually at the moment for what for, tv series? yeah uh, for you know movies or movies? tv i'm um, looking to do i mean everybody is but that's where my focus is at the moment you've been married how long now for and this is not a test <laughs> no i know it's like 40 years or something yeah i think so 80 84 84 will be 40 years this year hmm. that's yeah. amazing yeah. We've been should together we maybe since... not put this part in the drink so that your wife doesn't hear that you don't know that this is 40 no no years. She, she's totally fine with it <laughs> Um, 40 years married. That's in Hollywood or in the music industry, that is unusual. Yeah, it is. But uh, she's an unusual human being, too. Is she Jesse's girl? No. Okay. Is there a Jesse's girl? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, of course. I mean, I write from a point of truth, even, the, you know, like a pop song. is It's got to have some kernel of truth or it doesn't ring doesn't ring accurately yeah. in people's minds. Yeah. You know? I've heard you tell a story about you were taking a class on stained glass. Stained glass, yeah. I thought I... I know. I've always liked to work with my hands, so, so I thought oh, the music the music thing doesn't work out. Yeah. I'll become a stained glass master and support and my family. And that's where Jessie's girl and she was going was to there. it. Yeah, and I was hot for her, and she wanted nothing to do with me, and so I wrote a song about it. <laughs> Worked out pretty well. Yeah, I got the better end of the deal. Yeah. Right? I, I wonder if she knows. Probably not. No, I I lost touch with them before. Um, okay. Before the song even came out. I know you're on tour. Yeah, I'm doing a, 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 a solo show, a, a duo show with acoustic guitars with Richard Marx. Yes. And uh, we've been friends for a long time. What do you love most about the new album? It came out exactly as I wanted it, mm -hmm. exactly as I envisioned it. Well, it's great. I listened to it. Cheers to the new album. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Can we do a lightning round? Mm -hmm. Quick answers. Your favorite song? Of who? Anyone. Uh, I am the walrus. A musician that you would like to collaborate with who you haven't worked with before? Paul McCartney. Weirdest thing about you? Wow. Um, hmm. That goes pretty deep. Uh, <laughs> Um, you can pass. I, I'm, you I'm, a, pass. I'm an amateur Egyptologist in Middle Kingdom. The best advice you ever got? Never give up. Worst advice you ever got? Never give up. <laughs> can drive you crazy. Yeah. No, uh, the worst advice? Um, wow. Uh, you'll never make it. What advice would you give a musician, an aspiring musician? Put you got to absolutely be passionate about it. you got to want it. The artistic life is an incredible life. Mm -hmm. It's got to be, I don't have a choice, really, this not to do this. This is all I want to do. This is all, this is what I'm made to do. Rick Springfield, thank you so much. It was a great drink. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.